What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm actually off work today, but I'm swinging by the shop, so I gotta wear, I'm gonna get dirty. That's just how it works. What tools to carry with you when you travel? My most asked question. See, since I picked up this new bike, the tools that I need, well, they've changed. So I'm gonna give you some tips on what to put in your ride. Now that I've got a place to put a tool roll, I've got a new product to show you, and yeah, let's just get to the shop. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John Maxwell. I'm a highly trained unprofessional right here at Chattahoochee Harley-Davidson. And on this channel, I bring you guys to work with me. So if you wanna learn more about Harley-Davidson, you should hit the subscribe button right now. I guess today's actually kinda of helpful for anyone with a motorcycle. Anyone looking to take a long trip? I don't have like a list of tools because like I mentioned, it, it varies between models and manufacturers and all that kind of stuff. What I'm gonna do is kind of lay out a, a what could happen and what's reasonable for you to do on the side of the road and some tips in picking out your tools. Now, just as important as the tools you're carrying, whatever brand they might be, whatever they might be used for is how they're organized because you don't want to sit on the side of the road forever like trying to find your stuff. If you're stuck on the side of the road, you wanna get everything fixed and back working properly as fast as possible. That's why when Trip Machine Company hit me up and wanted to work together, I instantly thought of you guys when I saw the tool roll. Check this out. I get a lot of emails and invitations to work with different companies. And I'll be honest, a lot of them aren't, um, Something that I want to put out to you guys, but just judging by Trip Machine's website alone, even the website is quality. See all of really nice stuff. Now, I admit not all of it is necessarily my style, but even in the quality pictures on their website, you can tell that it's quality products. Specifically today, we're going to look at the tool rolls. They've sent me two of them and we're gonna talk about how to fill them up, what you need on them, and all that good stuff. I guess I probably should have opened up with the fact that Trip Machine sent me two of these tool rolls, meaning that one of them, I'm gonna give away to you guys. Talk about how you can get one at the end of the video. But for now, let's just talk about, I mean, straight quality, handmade, I mean, it's. It's absolutely gorgeous. I almost feel bad putting things in it and getting it all dirty. They also sent me a thigh bag, which you can see on the website how it's worn, or basically, well, around your thigh, hence the name. It's got a really nice single compartment inside, and it attaches around your belt loop and your thigh to be held on your person. For me, I just scored a bike with saddlebags, so I don't really need a thigh bag, but it is good if you don't have anywhere to put anything. It's actually gonna work out really well to hold all my GoPro stuff in, because anybody that moto vlogs knows that it's not just the GoPro, you got batteries and charger and all this junk with you all of the time, everywhere you go. So now to be nice and organized, just like I want my tools organized on my road trip. So I'm gonna go through my own bike from front to rear and think about what I might want or need on the road and you can do the same on your models and figure out what it is you need to carry. For starters, I'm gonna to wanna to be able to check tire pressure on the go. Just a simple pencil gauge will work and it'll slide right into that cool tool roll without taking up too much space. Now my model has spoke wheels front and rear, but I'm not gonna carry a spoke wrench. I'm gonna check my spokes before I go on the ride, not while I'm on the road. It's up to you whether or not you would carry something like that. I would highly suggest going through your bike before the trip, not on the side of the highway though. Depending on what kind of bars you run and how easy it is to adjust them, you might wanna carry a quarter inch Allen socket and a T27 and T25 so that you can move your bars around for more comfort during a ride. I've had to do it on my sports for a few times and I'll probably carry it for this bike too. It just so happens I also really wanna roll these bars a little more forward for this bike. How's that look? Levers, you may or may not wanna move those. I actually think I might like these and I'm gonna end up with the tools on the bike to change it on the fly anyway. 
readjust my mirrors. While we're on the subject of bars though, throttle cables, clutch cable, things like that could need adjusting on the road. Ideally, you'll take a look at that stuff before you leave, but if not, throttle cables run different sizes. Stock Harley is generally 3 8 for the newer stuff. Some of the aftermarket cables though are 5 64ths, like on my old Sportster. And part of the problem with those is, well, most times they're the same size nut. To me, it doesn't make as much sense to carry two 3 8 wrenches as it does to carry one 3 8 wrench and an adjustable wrench also. Like this, but significantly smaller. Now, your clutch cable may be the same way. You may end up with too much play in the lever. You may need a full-blown clutch adjustment. Ideally, another thing that you've checked before you got on the road, but depending on how long your trip is too, that's something to think about. You might just need a clutch adjustment because you've done that many miles. My point though, clutch levers, the adjustment nuts, they're different sizes based on stock Harley, aftermarket, and well, my 2018 and later Softail has a totally different design that I did a video on. For me right now, I just need this tiny screwdriver. Stock Harley Davidson needs half inch and 9 16 open-ended wrenches. Easy enough. But your aftermarket, again, might be two 7 16 or two half inches. Those are probably the most common. So another instance of just carry the 7 16 inch wrench and an adjustable wrench. That way you're not carrying double wrenches. And we've already packed the adjustable wrench in the tool roll anyway. If you watch that full clutch adjustment video, you know you're gonna need to remove the derby cover and you're gonna need a couple of tools to do that. A T27 that we're already carrying for the handlebar adjustment, an 11 16 inch socket or wrench depending on how you wanna do it, and a 7 30 seconds Allen wrench. Easy enough, but if we're gonna carry any sockets, we're gonna need the ratchet too. My tool roll already has the ratchet because I like bit sockets better. Let me explain in further detail. Earlier I mentioned having a T25 and a T27. Well, they make Torx keys too. It's the same thing as an Allen key, it's just got a Torx bit on it. You know, Torx key, Allen key, you tracking? Problem is, this is all the leverage I can get out of this tool. This little dinky, I can use this tool and get a lot more leverage out of it. And depending on how you want to set up your tool roll, you have a few different sockets and one ratchet to get it all done. Pro tip though, we're already carrying a 3 8 wrench, right? And we have an Allen key. Now I have more leverage, albeit a little harder to use. Well, not harder to use as much as um, the potential for a tool slip off and scratching something is a little higher doing the double wrench method, the wrench extension method. But it, I, I don't think that's a name for anything actually. A good example of needing that leverage for Allen keys versus a ratchet and a bit socket is shift linkage. I posted a few videos on the shift linkage getting loose and I got a lot of emails about people that couldn't get it any tighter or just couldn't make it work like I had made it work on my video. Well, part of that reason is because they're probably using Allen keys instead of something with a decent amount of leverage. Something to think about when you're packing your tool roll. The newest, most updated shift lever, it uses a 3 16 Allen and a 7 16 I think it's 7 16 hold on. Yeah, 7 16 wrench to get it tight. Depending on what size your clutch cable, your, depending on what size your clutch cable adjuster nut is, you might already have a 7 16 wrench in your tool roll. Just so happens that my shift linkage is also a 3 16 Allen here, but a half inch wrench back here. You might already be carrying a half inch wrench also. I don't think I've needed a half inch wrench yet, so I'm gonna put one in my, in my bag. On the other side of the bike, but still up front, exhaust nuts, they could come loose on the road and you definitely don't want an exhaust leak while you're hundreds of miles from whatever location to get a new nut or what have you. A uh, half inch wrench for some locations, half inch sockets, 
it really kind of depends on whether or not you need a deep well or a shallow socket and what sizes wrenches you might want for me it's a little tough to get to mine behind this oil cooler so I better make sure it's tight before I leave for my trip. We've talked before about how a ton of electrical problems, engine lights, runnability issues can all be solved by tightening the battery terminal bolts. For, I think, every terminal bolt ever on all the motorcycles, Harleys that I've worked on, they're pretty much always 10 millimeter, regardless of whether or not it's a Harley battery or some other brand. But you're gonna wanna carry the necessary tools to get to your battery and to tighten them. Sometimes that means a 10 millimeter wrench or a 10 millimeter socket extension and ratchet. This is a great time to mention too, you might wanna pick all of your bit sockets in quarter or 3 8 drive so that you're not carrying two ratchets. Just a thought. It just so happens for this model that I need a screwdriver to take my seat off. These are only finger tight right here. And I'll be needing the ratchet extension and socket to get to both my negative cable and my positive cable on this 18 soft tail. While I'm here underneath the seat, I might as well mention that for this model, I have a preload suspension adjustment underneath my seat and tools that go with it. That's really dependent on the model too, but my tool roll is gonna have this. You other 18 heritage soft tail owners, you might wanna make sure your stuff is in there too, cause you're weight is going to change during your trip you know passenger stuff loaded on all that stuff other riders might need this air gauge for their air shocks depending on what exhaust you run we've talked about head pipes but what about mufflers too way too many combinations to list them all out but it's worth checking them and making sure you have that wrench already put in your tool roll for whatever else that wrench fits I might want to make sure that I have stuff to keep my saddlebags tight just in case. I also want to make sure that my passenger foot pegs are tight as well. They, anything like that could loosen up, but me personally, that's more stuff that I check during services or before I go on a big ride. So the likelihood of me needing any of that stuff on the side of the road is pretty slim, hopefully. For my tool roll, that pretty much completes everything. I'm already going to know if my belt is tight or not are adjusted before I leave. But if I didn't and I needed to change on the road, it's a 36 millimeter wrench. I'm not carrying this with me, so I better be checking it first. All my major torques are already done before I leave. So as far as the rear of the bike goes, most of it I guess is kind of seems like it's up front. Now, a couple of tips on how to fill this up. The website linked down below actually has some great pictures of how they set up their tool roll, kind of how they design it and what they had in mind when filling it up. Obviously I'm not gonna use my work tools to go in the bag, but you know, wrenches, like so, even more wrenches. I could even fit some of my long bit sockets down here. That kind of reminds me though, actually, that when putting tools in your tool roll, I would not use the same tools you use to actually work on your bike. I'd go get some new tools. There's a few reasons for that. One, because you're way more likely to forget to put something in your tool roll if you have to build it every time you leave. Also, I would suggest, oh, you know what I didn't mention? Snap ring pliers and, you know, for the footrest and stuff, if you were to need to tighten them, those might be needed. Make sure you check that on your model. They would fit in there just like this. A set of dykes isn't a bad idea, but you might want to carry a smaller pair because Sometimes a solid set of zip ties is gonna keep you out of trouble. And I would put those zip ties right in this convenient pouch right here with the zipper and everything, which is probably where all my bit sockets are gonna go. Back to what I was saying about which tools to carry. Personally, I think it's a good idea to carry the cheapest but best set that you can. There's a couple reasons. One, 
when you get stuck on the side of the road, you're gonna wanna be back on the road. So you're gonna be moving quick. And if you get a little rambunctious and decide it's time to go and you leave your tools on the side of the road, best to be out a less amount of side of money. Best be left out, you know, the least amount of money possible. Although I really hope you don't forget your really nice tool roll altogether. But you know, if you lose a cheap screwdriver or whatever, whatever. Second is, what if it's not your bike, but it's your buddy's bike that needs a little bit of help on the road? Or maybe even a complete stranger, because we all stop for a down rider, right? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to throw somebody a couple of tools that they need, and maybe you need to keep going or whatever, you can just give them away and be out 10, 15 bucks instead of 40, 50 bucks. So that's some ideas of what I'm gonna carry on my trip on my new bike. Let me know in the comments below if you think I forgot something or something that you always carry that maybe I forgot to mention. I also promise you guys a giveaway of this really nice tool roll from Trip Machine Company. They actually sent one in both colors, one of each color, the all black, the black and tan. So how do you enter? Well, you comment down below, you give this video a big dirty thumbs up, and you share it with your friends and hopefully they can learn a thing or two about what to carry on their bike. One week from when I post this video, I'm going to film myself, do one of the random comment things. If you follow this channel at all, then you know that I've never actually done a giveaway, but I have kind of tested the feature out and it'll pop up a comment. So you absolutely must comment on this video, not on the Facebook link or the Instagram link or whatever to be entered into the contest or the giveaway, whatever. It's not really a contest, it's just a straight up giveaway. I'll explain what the winner gets in the next video. So that's pretty much it for this week though. I think I nailed it all. I have to go and get some cheaper tools so I'm not carrying snap-on tools on the road with me so that I can load up my tool roll to go to Paris, Texas. Hope to see some of you guys out there too. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big dirty thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button, tap the bell notification so you know when I upload, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.